grateful for the blood that has washed us white as snow. Father, we are most grateful to you this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord of heaven. We thank you, dear Father. Thank you, Lord, for our lives. Thank you, Lord, for preservation. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for the power that is in that blood. Thank you for the work that the blood has wrought in our lives. Thank you, Father, for the work that the blood continues to do on the face of the earth. Lord, we bless you in the name of Jesus. We honor you, O God, that we belong to you, O God. Thank you. Thank you for that blood. He's still speaking. He spoke in time past. It is speaking right now. It will yet speak over us. He's speaking live. He's speaking love you and we celebrate you. We celebrate all that you have done through the blood of Jesus, through the sacrifice of Jesus. Father, receive our worship this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. I don't know how many of us are just grateful to the Lord for the blood of Jesus. I'm grateful. You know, my eye caught something before I came up. I was just trying to check something at, um, in Leviticus 17. And I saw verse 6, I'm like, oh God, thank you. If it had not been for the Lord Jesus, being a pastor and doing the work of a priest, how many people are called priests here? You know, you, you, I, I doubt if you'll be able to wear something like, like what I'm wearing today, or even wear what you are wearing too. Because priestly work those days used to be a bloody kind of work or assignment. Amen. You know, um, Blood, blood, blood. And our God is still very much into blood. Amen. We just appreciate the Lord for this morning. We thank the Lord for bringing us into the month of April. We thank the Lord for what he will accomplish. And I just want to say ahead of time to every one of us here that this month of April is a, is a month that I believe strongly the Lord expects victories and victories in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord expects that there will be lots of victories. There will be shouts of rejoicing. There will be testimonies this month in the name of Jesus. Father, we bow our hearts this morning as we go into your word. We ask Almighty God that your word will do us good this morning in the name of Jesus. Speak to our hearts, O oh God. Speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus. Lord, reveal your truth. Reveal your way. Help us to happen upon life. Help us to, to, to touch life. Help us to embrace life as, as your word comes forth again this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord of heaven, for we've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I have, I believe, a very simple assignment this morning. You know, I'm, I can't deny the fact that I'm still getting a bit um, confused myself about first service and second service. And um, this is combined service, right? But you know, somehow... I, I came in thinking, you know, it's for service, and there's going to be a, sec <laughs> there's going to be a second service. Amen. Uh, it is well. All that the Lord has in stock for us, we will have in the name of Jesus. I believe this morning that my assignment is very, very simple. Uh, we're going to be looking at the topic, victory by the blood. That is what we're looking at, victory by the blood. And um, I, I just want to um, bring an introduction to this, because we trust that the whole of this month, We'll have the liberty, we'll have the time to go into that topic, explore it. And I'm trusting the Lord that a new appreciation will come to you, amen, about the blood of Jesus. A new appreciation will come to you about the power that resides in the blood of Jesus. Not the power that resided, amen, but the power that still resides, the power that is in the blood of Jesus, amen, through this blood. Do you want to, do you, want to you know, try to imag imagine how many people have been, have been transformed, how many lives have become changed by the blood of Jesus? Amen. You, you can't even imagine it. This blood is blood, a blo it, 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 it's not a blood, there's nothing like a blood. It is blood that cannot be exhausted. Amen. It cannot finish. In quantity, it can't finish in strength and in power. It cannot finish in the impact that it has upon the lives of men and women. Amen. The blood of Jesus is, 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 is um, precious. Amen. It is precious. And I'm trusting that you will come to a new level of, um, of appreciation for it in Jesus' name. You know, sometime in the month, no, in the year 2020, this is 2022, 
I think it was in 2020 or well, maybe 2021, I'm not too sure. At the beginning of the year, the Lord said to us that we have come of age. You don't know how many of us can remember. I think it was 2021, last year. Part of what he also said to us is that 2021, 2020, 2020 crossing over into 2021. Okay, those are my scribes. Amen. <laughs> they are the ones that record it down, so they, they keep it. Okay, so the Lord said to us that you have come of age. The Lord said you have come into maturity. And uh, that word is beginning to dawn upon me much more now. We were here during the, that was Friday into Saturday. We had, uh, we, had, um, um, we had vigil. And, you know, that word came to me again that truly we have come of age. You know, that I, I could look at us and at some point and I would say, uh, people are not able to bear this. Uh, people are not able to understand this. Uh, people are not to do this and do that. But I felt the Lord, you know, pushing and pushing us and asking us to come deeper and deeper into the waters. And I'm beginning to realize that truly we have capacity. Amen. You are, you, we, we, are, we, are, we are coming into more maturity. We are growing up. We are, we, are, we, are, we are becoming bigger. We are becoming better. Amen. You are understanding more, you know, the, the heritage that you have. You are tracking better with the Lord. Amen. You know, at the vigil, I just looked at the, the way people traveled with strength. And I'm like, God, you are doing something here. You are truly building things into us. So I'm trusting God that you will come to a place of appreciation for what the, the victory that you have in the blood of Jesus as we go into this, into this month. Amen. Um, the word of the Lord says in John 4, 35, it says, Say not, you know, there are four more months and then comes harvest. Don't look at yourself and say, um, let four more months pass and then harvest will come. Because right now, harvest is here already. Harvest is here. Harvest is here. We, we are beginning to have appetites. We are growing bigger. We are growing. We are getting more matured. We are moving into the things of God, you know, with, with excitement, wanting to know and wanting to journey with the Lord. And I ask that the Lord will help you. He will strengthen your heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, let me, I want to start by looking at Revelations 12, 12 uh, verse 11. Revelations 12, 11. And I'll say a couple of things before I even go into this particular verse. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to read actually from 1 to 12. We'll read from 1 to 12. But let me say a bit about the book of Revelation. Part of what my assignment is in this place this morning also is that the Lord will help you to come into a place of appreciating the book of Revelation better. I'm trusting the Lord that somewhere along the line during the course of this meeting, the Lord will put upon your heart a desire for you to even read through, re -read through the book of Revelation this month of April. Somebody say amen. amen. Please say a stronger amen. Okay, Lord, so, so be it. My people are in agreement. I'm trusting that you will see a reason to go through the book of Revelation this month of April and just read through the book. If you were at your PCG this week, and if you moved on to lesson four, interpreting the Bible, the very first thing that your leader, or your, yes, the leader of your PCG would have said to you might have been this, that for you to understand the whole of the Bible, you need to understand what? The parts. You need to understand what? You need to have a, a bit of understanding of the different parts. You, might, you don't need to have the detailed understanding of the different parts of the Bible. But for you to understand the Bible as a whole, you need to understand what? The different parts. You need to just understand a bit about the different parts. For you to understand how the human body functions. Everything about the human body, how it functions. You need to understand that the hand is the one that holds something. The leg is the one that walks. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'll, I'll go into Revelation 12. We'll read 1 to 12. But before I even go into it, I want to, before we go into the, into the chapter 12, that is a part of Revelation, I want to say to you that there is a, you need to have a little bit of appreciation for the book of Revelation itself. What do you have to say or what do you, what do you need to know about the book of Revelations. I just want to say a bit to you. Who wrote the book of Revelation? You know, this, this past few weeks, we've been looking at interpreting the Bible, right? We have been looking at interpreting the Bible, making use of tools to understand what you read in the Bible. And part of what we have learned over the weeks is that when you pick a portion of the Bible to read, you should ask yourself, who wrote this portion of the Bible? To who was it written? 
you know, like where, you can try to find out where, around where was it written, what is the culture of that place, all of those things just make you appreciate the scriptures better. The Bible reading comes alive. One of the things we found out is that Bible reading is not interesting to several people because we read and we don't under, or we used to read and we did not used to understand. Okay, so one of the things that will make you understand is that you, un you just have some basic um, foundational principles about interacting with the Bible so that you can get the most out of it. One of it is when you are reading a portion, who wrote it? To whom was it written? Around what time was it written? What is the purpose of this particular book? So I want to say to you, the book of Revelation was written popularly um, agreed that it was written by John. You remember the sons of Zebedee, right? Where the, the, the one that their mom came to Jesus and said, let one sit on the right, another one on the left. John and James. So this was written by John, the brother of James, both of them are apostles of the Lamb, apostles of, apostles of Jesus Christ. We, by, going by, by um, history, we believe that James was the first of the apostles to be martyred. That is his brother, was the first to be what? Martyred. The, the, the last to die, we believe, is John, the person that wrote Revelation. He's the last to die of all the apostles, but he was not martyred. He died naturally. You know, of all of them, I think he's the only one that died a natural death. All the rest of them were brutally murdered. They were killed. They were, they were martyred. I can't remember who it was that his skin was removed. As in, you know when you say you are skinning a cow, where we get leather for our shoes and our bags, the way you skin a cow, that was how this particular apostle of Jesus was skinned. They removed the skin. Imagine that in your mind, and I'm, I'm sure you are seeing blood already. Feel comfortable with it. This kingdom we belong to is actually a very bloody kingdom. Amen. So his skin was removed, like skin layer like this, removed. I, 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 um, on the internet, someone tried to depict it. You know, just have, have skin alone. Just roll up flesh alone. And then you, if you look at the person, you realize the person is full of blood. Amen. Some people are squeezing and can, can we not move away from this topic? Can we not just move away from this particular sin? Let's move to act, sin two of this, uh, of this act. Amen. But feel comfortable with it. These are people that paid for you to be seated and saying that you are a Christian. Amen. They paid with their life. They paid, paid, paid with their blood. Okay, so John is the only person that died a normal death. Peter, if I remember well, you remember how Jesus was killed? He was crucified, his head up, his legs down, right, and nailed to the cross. They were going to do that for Peter. And he said, no, 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 you can't do the same thing to me the way you killed my master. I am lower than him. I can't die the way he, he died. Please put me upside down. And so his legs were up here and his head, his head was down. That was how he was nailed to the cross because he, he, was, he was nailed to the cross like the Lord Jesus, just that he didn't do it head up. Amen. Okay, so John wrote this book. Um, and he, it, will, um, it will interest you to know that he wrote it when he was in exile on the Isle of Patmos. Amen. He was an, on an island. He was on exile. Exile means you are, you, are, you are condoned off. You are banished to a place. You are not allowed to be with other people. Amen. You are not with your family. You are secluded in a place like just let him rot in that place and die off. He was in that place. But out of that place... I'm taking the liberty to tell you some of these things so that you can appreciate some things when we go through tough times and difficult situations. I think in, in James 1, we were told, you know, don't count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, right? When you go through difficult situations, people like this can say it because they were not just saying words. They were saying things that they experienced with their lives. John was banished into exile. He was on an island by himself. And out of his experience, out of his suffering, came the book of what? Revelation. Out of that place, he was able to receive for us, I think 22, is it? Yes. 22 chapters. If, of course, it didn't come as chapters. You know, for easy reading, it was later on broken down. 22 chapters of the book of Revelation, he was able to get it from the Lord. In spite of the fact that he was suffering. Some of us, when we are going through tough times and difficult situations, nobody can get your attention. Some people will say, I cannot even pay attention because I need a solu this solution to this problem. I need my house rent paid. I need this school fees paid. You can't pay attention. If John was saying, I'm suffering, I'm in trouble, I can't pay attention, would we have the book of Revelation? 
And that is why part of the reason why we come to church, so that we can learn the ways of the kingdom. That there are things that you, are, you might be going through, and inside that you're suffering, the Lord wants to deliver something to you that will help your brother or your sister. And you must still be able to pay attention. One of the things that will make us think, ah, this problem must be over before I can listen to anything, you know, because before my joy can return, before my life can return to normal, before I can start smiling again and playing with everybody, this problem must, re must just be solved. One of the things that will help you, such that you don't need to wait till you see the problem completely solved the way you want it. One of the things that should encourage you is what we find in Revelations, at the end of Revelations. John, no, no, Revelation 17, 14, at the end of the day, you will find Jesus leading the saints to victory. Actually, the whole book of Revelation has to do with the victory of the saints through the blood of Jesus. Now, if you know the end, should it not be easier to go through the presence? The end is that we win. Say we win. That is the end. Whatever it is that you might be going through or you will go through in life, let it be at the back of your mind. That we, you know some of us, when they are watching movie, I'm not like that, Sharp. My husband used to be like that. When you are watching like this, all of you are seated or you are going to see a movie. They will go and quickly look at the review of the, of the, of the, of the movie. They want to see, is the actor going to die? Are these good guys going to die? Or the bad guy will get caught and you know, killed or something? You want to know the end. So when you now know the end, you now come back and say, hey, now, let's begin. Because your mind is at rest now. You know that, you know, this thing is going to end well. I'm telling you, if you read Revelation, you will be going to go and have a review of your life and my life. And you will see at the end of the day that the bad guys are going, they are not going to get, they will be caught, they will be, they will be, they will be punished. And we, the good guys, by the precious blood of Jesus, we are going to what? Win. That is what the Bible says. At the end, we know that we win. So that should help you to go through whatever challenge, whatever, um, um, I don't want to say tribulation, but whatever challenge that you might be going through, whatever difficulty. John was able to pay attention to Jesus. He got revelation for us. Amen. Revelation that is still blessing us, that will bless your great-grandchildren if Jesus tarries. Amen. This man, this apostle of Jesus, got something for us that forever we will be grateful to the Lord for. Please do not take for granted whatever challenge that you are going through in the midst of it. Because now you know the end, that you win. At the, the end, you know that the end is that it's going to be all right for us. Amen. Not just all right. Jesus is not coming, you know, for, he's not coming. Rapture is not that he will come and rescue his people. It's not a rescue mission. I hope you know. I hope you know. That rapture is not a rescue mission by Jesus for his saints that have been defeated. That the devil, the devil and the people of the world have nearly killed them. So Jesus will now just come and take us out before they finally kill us. Say, ah, ah, thank you, Jesus. Then if, if, if we are delayed, they would have finished us. Mm -mm. Go back to Exodus. I think Exodus, um, what is that? Maybe 12? Is it Exodus now or Leviticus self? If you read through, you realize that. I think it was 12. It's the 12, rather. These Israelites, what did they do to the, the Egyptians? No, no, what did the Egyptians do to the Israelites? They said, please, let these people begin to go now, now, now. They chased them out. Do you understand? They were begging them to go. They were begging the Israelites to go, as in just go. Because if you don't go, we, all of us will die. That is the thing. Not that we are saying, God, come and take us out oh, before these people kill us. It is the people that were begging the people of God to go. Go so that the anger of your God will not come and destroy all of us in Egypt. Because they were almost, Egyptians were almost gone. They were almost dead. So they were begging. People of God, please go. Go and worship your God. Go and, you know, go and see your God. Just leave us. Let us, let us try and make some sense out of what is left out of our lives. So you are not at a disadvantage. Is what I'm trying to say to you. Even when, see, if, if you, if, if you, head or tail, you, you win. Say that. Head or tail, you win. The, the whistle cannot be blown when you are not winning or when you are defeated. Do you understand what I'm saying? At the end of your life, victory is the summary of your life. And you need to just be confident in that. Whatever it is that you are going through right now, know that victory is the summation of your life. So John wrote this portion of the, of the scripture and um, he wrote it in, with a, there is a style and a presentation with which the book of Revelation was written. I'll take my time to talk about Revelation because I'm trusting God that you will be inspired to go and read this book during the course of this month. 
you just go. It's just 22. 22. If you decide before the end of this week, you, have, you can be done with the book. But it will help you. It will really help your Christian experience. Amen. Okay, so how was Revelation written? So that when you begin to read, you will not get tired. Revelation is written with a style that is called, it's apocalyptic in nature. Apocalyptic means it is not literal what you see there, unlike other parts of the scriptures where they will tell you um, um, Jesus walked with these two men on the road to Emmaus and they were talking and you know it is literal. What they are saying is what you are seeing, and that is how it happened. But for the book of Revelation, I'm saying it ahead of time because this is one of the reasons why people don't enjoy reading it or people don't want to read it because they are reading and it is full of so, more, so many symbols and figures. I'm telling you ahead of time. That is the way Revelation was written. And the truth is, when I researched, I found out that the Jews those days used to write like this. They used to write apocalyptic um, 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 writings for one major reason, to hide the details of their writings from the uninitiated, to hide it from people that were not a part of the family. Are you understanding? What? And it made me understand why Jesus said, for you, it is hid for, for, for you, no, for them it is hidden, but for you, it is given that you understand do you understand what is going on in the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom you are supposed to understand. So this kind of written is not something that is foreign to people of or to the Jewish community. The Jews usually during suffering, they used to write apocalyptic writings. And the major reason is if this document falls into the hands of one that does not belong to us, you will not understand. Seeing, they see, but they do not understand. Hearing, they hear, but understanding does not happen in their hearts. But not for you. When it gets into the hands of the people to whom it was intended, they will understand. Amen. And so when you read through Revelations, you realize you have a lot of symbols. You have a lot of, um, you know, um, symbols and figures, illustrations, and they are not literal. I'm telling you ahead of time. Not literal, but it is written for you. And there are some things that you will clearly understand as you read with been. But when you are reading the scripture, whether you are reading for your personal consumption, maybe you are doing your Bible reading, or you want to go through, a, you want to just have meditation on a portion of the scriptures, you usually would need to start with what? A word of prayer. Asking that the Holy Spirit will come alongside you and help you understand what you are reading. Amen. So what we see in this book, the purpose of it is that the people of Jesus will see that there is victory at the end of the day. Amen. What we see in Revelation, victory, victory, victory. We are seeing that Jesus Christ has, he is the only one that has the dominion, is the only one that has the authority to rule on the face of the earth. He's the one that has the power to remake the, the world. The, of course, the world is gone into chaos, right? Jesus has the power to remake it. He has the power to reign in righteousness. And the Bible says when he will come back, I hope you know, he's going to come back to reign with his saints. He's going to reign with you and I. Amen. There is this second coming of Jesus that we are talking about, is that he will come back to reign here. He's not coming to come and take us and take us to heaven. He's actually coming so that we can reign with him here on earth, not taking us to heaven. If you go before he comes, that is when you can say you have gone, quote and unquote, to heaven. And that is a waiting, you're like you are waiting. But all of us are waiting. The Bible says when Jesus appears in the cloud, what will happen? The dead in Christ will do what? Rise first. So those ones that went ahead of him, that we can say they've gone to glory, they've gone to heaven, those ones will rise first. And those of us that will be present, if we are present, when the Lord appears in the sky, will join them in the clouds. Amen. But then all of us are coming back here to rule here. Let these things begin to dawn upon you. This is your life. You might not understand everything fully, but this is your life. Amen. Amen. So what we see here, what we see in the book of Revelation is that Jesus Christ has power. He's coming back at the end of the day. There's going to be victory. At the end of the day, there's going to be reward for people that endure to the very end. Amen. We see in Revelation 2.10, it says, those that endure to the very end, they will be rewarded. He said that in Revelation 2.10. He said, to him that endures to the very end. Um, 2.10. 2.10 says, do not fear any of these things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison and, and um, 
into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. There is reward at the end of the day. So when you go through Revelation, what you will see, you will see the fact that true, we will go through some things, but at the end of it all, there is what? There is victory. Now let's read Revelation 12, 10. There is victory. I gave you that um, final gist or the gist of the, of, the, of, of the book so that you will understand that victory is what we are looking at. Now, let's, we will read from verse 1 of um, Revelation 12. It says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with, with a sun, with a moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then, being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another, you know, when I read this, um, I don't know, you know, we read in pictures. He said a woman wants to give birth, dressed in sun. I'm like, this is typical of women. Amen. But remember that this is not literal, Shao. It's not literal, but this is typical of a woman. Imagine somebody said, verse 2, she wants to give birth. She was crying due to the birth pangs that she was going through. But imagine her dressed in sun, standing on the moon, her head, headgear, stars. As in dead, looking very beautiful. Can you not see the woman? Pregnant and, you know, heavily pregnant, ready to deliver, but I'm sure she has lipstick on. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Verse 3, it says, And another sign appeared in the heaven. Behold, a great fiery, fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. Verse 4, He still drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. We see war in this place now. Verse 5. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. So the child was preserved. But then the devil was mad and was like, I'll go after the woman. Then the woman fled to the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that she should feed, that she should feed there. 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Now, we're getting to the part that really concerns us. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. Verse 8. But they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. Hallelujah. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. It's, another translation says, Salvation and, and, and power has been established. Amen. He says salvation and strength has been established. The kingdom of God also established. The power of his Christ established. Amen. Uh, for the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Hallelujah. Verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and um, the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Our focus really is verse 11. It says, and they overcame. They overcame. Oh, this is how war that broke out. This is how victory came. What is going on here? What we see from verse 7, the Bible says and, uh, there was war that broke out in heaven. Angel and his, uh, uh, Michael and his angels fought the, with the dragon and his angels. Amen. And the Bible said the dragon and his angels did not prevail. But we see the reason now. Verse 11 is saying to us that this war broke out. How prevailing came, how victory came, we can see is linked to what? The blood of the Lamb. Did you see that? That is something is happening here. Let's say you have a scene here. Angel, um, Mike, Angel Michael and his angels are fighting with the dragon and his angels here. And then we, they are showing us the other, they are showing us the back end. 
that what is going on there is actually being fueled by what is going on in this place. Amen. As the blood of the lamb is being poured out, as the blood of the lamb is being offered up in sacrifice, amen, through this blood, victory is happening in this place. You remember what happened? I think that was in um, Exodus 17. Exodus 17, when, let, let's see now. As um, um, the children of Israel, as they had a battle, there was a time they had um, Exodus 17, and then the Bible says, they realized that they were having victory at some point. They realized that victory was eluding them at another point. Amen. Uh, okay, verse 12. And so, let me read from 11. It says, and so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel did what? Israel did what? He pre Israel prevailed. That is Exodus 17, verse 11. And so it was when Moses held up his hand. Here now, we've come back to this scene. Mo as Mo no, no, here, this scene. This is where Moses was doing something in the secret. This is where the battle was going on in the open for everyone to see. Joshua was here in the valley with all the people, the Israelites, and they were fighting. But after a while, they came to an understanding that there seemed to be a correlation between what is happening down in the valley and what is happening up on the, on, on the mountain. Amen. We realized that the times that we were winning the Amalekites, we realized that so Moses' hands were lifted high in the air. And the times that we noticed that we were being defeated by them, his hands were already weak, he was tired, and the hands were down. They realized a, a, a correlation. They realized that there was this activity between these two activities. And that is what we see in Revelation um, 12 that we just read in verse 11. The Bible says they overcame. This over The fact that Jesus shed his blood. Amen. This is to help each and every one of us to understand the connection between the blood of Jesus and our access to victory. Amen. This month of, um, of April, I believe strongly, is a month that the Lord has ordained that we record huge testimonies. We record many victories in different aspects of our lives. Now, something that happened, what happens is this. There is a, when you, that word, focus. When you focus on a thing, you begin to give strength to it. When you focus on a thing, you begin, you know, focus, putting your attention on something. Is, is a, it's a, I call it like creative energy that makes something happen. When you give focus to something, amen. The Bible says a man that is unstable in all his ways, James 1. He says, let that man not think he will get anything from the Lord. When you are asking, and you are saying, God, this is, is A that I want. And then, your mind is quickly shifting to Z, saying, I might not get A, or maybe I should start planning for Z. The Bible says, that man, you are oscillating between two, uh, you are oscillating between two places. You are wanting A, or you are wanting Z. Make up your mind. Because you are dispensing energy in the two di directions. And at the end of the day, the Bible says, such a man will have nothing. Amen. James 1, let me read to you. From 6. It says, but let him ask in faith with no doubt. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. For he is double-minded, he is unstable in all his ways. I brought this scripture up to say one thing to you. This month of April is a month that you need. The, we believe the Lord will want us to focus on the blood of Jesus. As you focus on the blood of Jesus, the results for you will be that you will appreciate the victory that you have had in Jesus already. And you have, you have the, that creative ability to bring about more victories. Is anybody understanding me? This month, we are looking at what? Victory through the blood of Jesus. And I'm saying, as you focus on the blood, you are going to come to a place where you appreciate the victories that you have experienced in time past. And as you focus, you are going to release creative energy to bring about what? Multiple victories. That is what the Lord wants for you this month. Multiple victories. What you focus on, we have been told over time, you become, right? What you focus on, you make room for. 
What you focus on expands. What you focus on becomes bigger. What you focus on becomes your reality. What you focus on, you just find it all around you. Amen. So I'm saying to you this month, focus on the blood of Jesus and the power that resides in that blood. And you are on your way to recording victories like never before. If you begin to focus on a lie, it's going to multiply itself to you. You are telling it indirectly, I want more of you. Can you release more of yourself to me? Can I experience more of you lie? So the more you focus, that is what you are doing. If you focus on lack, what do you get? More lack. If you focus on demons, have you been in communities or co churches, quote and unquote, because such are not even supposed to be churches in the first place. You know, a, a church is the gathering of God's people. When you focus on demons, what do you get? When you focus on demons, what do you get? Demons will multiply itself and say, this babe likes us, giving us attention. Can we create more reality for her? Can we multiply ourselves and laminate ourselves and do photocopy of ourselves and become more so that she can see more? Anything you focus on, you get more of it. Focus on your weaknesses. You will keep seeing how not good enough you are. And it is not anybody's doing. You have power in your hands. You have chosen, this is what I want my power to generate. That is what you are saying. Now, am I saying I shouldn't focus or I, am I saying I shouldn't look at where I have gone wrong, like failures I've experienced in life? Should I not learn from my mistakes? Because if I don't look at what I've done wrong, how will I now learn from it? Is anybody understanding what I'm saying? They say there is really no bad experience in life. It is an experience that you fail to learn from that eventually becomes a bad experience for you and you can target failure. But the truth is there's really no failure anywhere. If you think, quote and unquote, you have failed in something, if you can learn from that failure, then is it still a failure? No. You have learned how not to do it. I learned of a man, I can't remember the story very well, that was on a paid employment, and then big position, and then he made a blunder. Maybe say, let's say, for example, the company lost like a million US dollars, and he was so, you know, over there. Once you miss or you goof, the next thing is they resign their appointments, right? Even their um, government officials, once they've done something wrong, what they do is what? They just resign and leave because they feel I have, um, I've let down my people. So this person was going to res resign and leave. And the boss said, you are going where? We just paid a $1 million school fees on your head. You now want to go. You can't go. This thing that you have done, this error, I'm too sure you won't do it again because you have learned. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you, are, when you have a failure or something goes wrong and you look at it to glean from it, it's different from focusing on it. That is what I'm trying to say. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is different from focusing. You are not focusing on it. You are looking at it. You are gleaning. When you hear the idea of gleaning, gleaning is you take from it, you know, what you, you can learn from it so that you can become better. You don't focus. You don't sit there. You don't say we die here. And then begin to look at it morning and night at it as if that is what you were told to look at in Joshua 1, 7 and 8. We said this book of the Lord should not depart from you. Is it your book of the Lord now? No. You shouldn't look at it and focus on it. Looking Every time you focus on failure, you have it multiplied. You realize that you have um, you fear creeps in. There was a period of time, you know, for me, maybe early, early time after, um, um, you know, um, after 2017. I started driving again. I returned back to work. But at some point, I realized I had, I had um, there was a kind of fear. I think this is even the very first time I'm mentioning this to any living, and I'm saying it to any human being. But it was something I experienced. That I'll be, I'll be on the highway, I'll be driving, and fear will be, I'll be like, you know, you're just going to swerve like this and swerve like this now, and you're going to eat people. And that fear, as I thought and thought about it, the fear was crippling and crippling the more. Until I, I began to learn. As in, you would just be driving, and that thing would, was as if it was a spell. It would just come upon me all of a sudden. And immediately, I would need to hold the steering very well. I'm like, God, help me here. And every time I park, I'll be like, ah, am I sure I want to carry this car again when I'm going home? Am I sure I want to drive this car again tomorrow? But eventually, the Lord helps me to overcome it. I don't focus on that fear. When that fear is coming, replace it. It's a battle. Amen. Replace it. Philippians 4, 8. Please open to it. It is the power of focus. All of us go through these things. 
You are on the highway now. The devil has come and he has brought bad thoughts to your, to your mind. Are you going to jump off from the highway? Even if you want to park, you know you still have to gently move to one side and park. Even if you agree, you are not driving again. But what you can do at that point in time is superimpose the word of God. Battles go on in our mind and we must learn to be ready for battle. You must learn to take it when it comes. Take the battle on and tell yourself you are, you, are, you are stronger than this. You can go through this. You can get to the end of this. Philippians 4.8 is still saying the same thing about focus, which is what I believe the Lord wants you to do this, this month of April. Focus on the power that resides in the blood of Jesus. Focus on the strength that is in the blood of Jesus. Focus upon the victory that you have in the blood of Jesus and you are about recording Several multitudes of words of victories. Philippians 4, 8, we are advised. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue in this thing, if there is anything praiseworthy in this thing, please meditate on these things. These are the things that should call for your meditation. The blood of Jesus and the victory that he makes available to the saints merits, you know, fits in into this. Focus on it. Focus on your strengths. Amen. Focus on the things that you are good at. Focus on the, uh, on the praises that you have heard in time past. Things that people have said to you. Focus on those things and you are going to see more victories come out of your life. Come to you this month in the name of Jesus. For some of us, your victories will be this month of April and I pray no, but that person is not here today. Because some people, it's just the month of April, when we are encouraging ourselves to focus on the victory that there is in the blood of Jesus, that is when they are going to record victories. And when we move to May, they move away from it. They don't focus on that power anymore. But for some people, they are going to have it for this April. They will have it for 2022. And they will have it for, as they go on, a lifetime. And that is what the Lord expects of you. There is power in the blood of Jesus. The victory that we see in Revelation 12, 11, the Bible says to us, no, the Revelation 12, 10, the Bible says to us that there was not a place found for the devil, for the dragon and his angels. They were actually thrown down to the earth. Verse 10. Is that verse 10? Verse 8. It says, but they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in, the, in heaven any longer. Verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out. That, oh, that serpent of old called the devil, Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast, with, cast out with him also. Amen. But verse 11 says to us that the victory that you see in 8 and 9 is actually connected to verse 11, which is that the blood of Jesus made strength available to overcome the devil. He made it available then, he's still making it available today. Amen. The blood of Jesus has power residence in it that makes available strength. He makes available victories. Amen. To you and I. Amen. And I'm trusting that this, this month of April, as you focus on it, as you maximize this power of focus, which is a creative, you know, it's an act of creative energy, you are going to create more and more victories that you, des you desire to see in your life and that the Lord God Almighty also wants you to have. Amen. So let your focus be upon the victory that Jesus has made available. Try or seek to understand this victory. Seek to understand the strength and the power that is in the word of God. That is in the blood of God. The blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to just say very quick, quickly to us um, some things about the blood. As I begin to round up. You know, we have the whole of this month to look at the blood of Jesus. And to look at the victory that we have in the blood of Jesus. The very first mention of the blood to my knowledge, is in Genesis 3, verse 21. I said earlier on that before I came up, as I read through Le Le Leviticus 17, verse, um, I saw verse 6, that talked about the priest, talked about the priest, um, that the priest would take the blood and sprinkle it upon the altar and sprinkle, you know, and I, was, I just saw it and I laughed. I'm like, wow, thank God that I, I wasn't a priest in that time before Jesus came. I would have been drenched in blood. <laughs> every time. And you also are kings and priests anyway, amen? All of us is bloody business we'll be doing. Bloody, bloody business. Blood everywhere. Now, if we talk, earlier on when I was talking, somebody was cringing in that place. You know, as in like, can we just not move away from this act? Let's just move away from this, 
let's move into, you know, as I was talking about somebody's flesh being peeled, I'm sure somebody will say, please don't say it again. <laughs> let's just go on. You know, blood, God is high, is big on blood, but not for the wrong reasons. Amen. Not for the wrong reasons, but for the right reasons. The reason why we will say blood and people will cringe is probably what as we, we've been exposed to. We've seen on media, when you see accidents, you see pool of blood, right? So we've associated blood with what? Death, destruction, right? We've associated blood with something that, ah, we don't want to see blood. Some people even tell you, I can't see blood. And yet, they ended up being pharmacists, or some of them doctors. I don't even know how a doctor wants to do without loving to see the sight of blood. You can't, that such a person can't deal, right? We just advise the child from now. See, your, your destiny is not the same as, uh, you know, it's not the line of uh, med medicine at all. You can't see blood. You can't stand blood. I, you know, just leave medicine for people that have strong hearts that can do it. But the truth is, blood is not, is not, is not bad. Blood should not be associated with death and destruction. It's just what we have seen, maybe what a media is projected to us. Amen. But from God's point of view, blood is associated with life. Say blood is life. Blood is life. When you think blood, I want you to begin to have a reorientation. That when you see blood, the first thing that comes to your mind is what? Is life. You know, we, we, need a, we need a redress of some, some topics or some themes in life. One of it, or well, even in Christianity, one of it is the, 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 this, uh, the, the book of Revelation. Quite a number of Christians don't want to read the book of Revelations. Why? Because they believe it's, Revelation has something to say about, you know, devil, devil, um, plenty of bad things. But the beginning of it, verse 1 of Revelation, Revelation 1, 1, says, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It can mean the revelation that Jesus made available to John. Is below, um, John is an um, apostle, right? Or it can be the revelation about Jesus Christ. But those two should still not make us say we want to run away from that book. It should make us say we want to read it. It is about the revelation of Jesus. Don't you want the revelation of Jesus? Don't you want to know what the scriptures have to say about the revelation of Jesus? The truth is, it's not even about the revelation of Jesus alone. It's actually about the revelation of Jesus leading his saints in triumphant, you know, in, in victory on the earth. Leading us in victory. And you want to, be, you want to see that. So, um, one thing that we need to begin to reorient ourselves on is about the book of Revelation. And I said earlier on, I'm trusting that you will be inspired this month to read the book of Revelation from beginning to the very end. That I just even want to understand our end. I want to go and do a review of this film, quote and unquote. I want to see a movie. I want to go to the back and see what happened. So please go through the book of Revelation. One other thing I want us to correct is the, the, that word blood. Blood shouldn't be associated with something bad. Blood shouldn't be associated with death. Blood should be associated with life. Genesis 3.21, after Adam and Eve fell and God came into the camp and, you know, noticed that they had done the unthinkable. What the Lord did in verse 21, the Bible says, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. For him to have gotten skin from that animal, you know that an animal must have been killed, right? Blood was shed. Such that life can be made available. What God did in that place, this display that you see in verse 21 here, is actually like, um, you know, um, um, a shadow of what Jesus or who Jesus will be for you and I, which is what Jesus eventually came to do. Amen. God killed an animal, got its skin and covered them because he told them that the day that you do this thing, you will begin to die. Now they were dying and God said, I will bring life upon you. And for life to come out, what did God do? He needed to kill an animal and get the skin of that animal to cover them. Amen. Amen. To cover them, to cover their reproach, to cover, quote and unquote, not literally, to cover their reproach, to cover their shame, to cover their nakedness. Amen. Blood is life. Levitic Leviticus 17, 11. Please, re um, um, let's open to it. It says clearly that the life of anything is in its blood. So I'm just trying to help you see um, some things about blood here. The first mention of it we'll see in Genesis 3.21 and Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. 
He said, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for your soul. So we see here blood being associated with what? Life. Every time you hear the blood of Jesus, or you even when you see the blood of, ordinary, uh, of human beings, rather, let your mind go to life, that this is life. Blood is life. Lo life, you know, for, for Jesus paid, he paid for us, paid, paid for the remission of our sins through his life, what is inside, through his blood, what is inside the blood. Blood is what carries for an, an average um, um, human being. Blood is, is that part of you that carries oxygen to your system, to your body, right? It is blood that makes life available. If you have flesh and blood is drained out, and you know there are some people that they actually drain blood out of them. For one reason or the other, maybe, right, doctor? They drain blood out and they infuse them with fresh blood. Blood that is not contaminated. Blood that is supposed to do their system well. If you have flesh, as good as flesh is, if blood is not running inside the body, that flesh is as good as what? But the blood brings oxygen that we need to sustain life inside our flesh. That same blood takes carbon, carbon dioxide out of us, right? It takes carbon dioxide out. It takes waste out. Blood carries life. When you think blood of Jesus, I want you to remember the life of Jesus. Amen. Blood, and of course, Jesus had to die. But his death was to bring out what? Life to you and I. When you look at blood also, it's from the sample of blood that the DNA of any human being is gotten. Am I right? It's from the blood that the DNA is gotten. Right? I don't know if they, they get it from the skin also, right? But it, the blood also has, it, it, it has, it has, from the DNA rather, the DNA that you find in the blood, you can discover who is this person. The identity of that person can be so as Jesus made that exchange for you and I, as he paid, you know, for your sins and my sins with his blood, he brought life to you and I. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, at some point of 52 initially, verse 14, it says when you look at him, there was no comeliness in him. When you see Jesus, when he was hanging on the cross, there was nothing to be desired about him or of him. Life was all like being drained out of him because he poured out his blood for you and I. He poured it out because he wanted to make life available to you. He poured it out because he wanted the effect of sin to be drowned and taken away completely in your life. He poured out his life to give us life. And that is why we can say we have victory. That is why we can say that victory is our portion. Victory is our lot. Amen. Jesus did not die. He didn't pour out his blood for nothing. He poured it out so that you can embrace a life of victory. Not just once, not just twice, not just once in a while, but continually. Amen. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And the Lord will want you to focus on it. He would want you to be mindful of the strength of the power that resides in that blood as we go into this month of, of, of April. And Oh, it will interest you to know that in this month also, you know, we have Easter. Resurrection is in this, we have Resurrection Monday, Sunday rather, happening in this month. It, it, it can be coincidental that we are looking at this topic at this time, but, you know, you will, you will do yourself a lot of good to get as much as you ought to get, such that it will not produce for you this month alone, but going forward, it will produce for you. Amen. There is victory in the blood of Jesus. Victory is gotten by the blood that Jesus shed for us. And this victory is yours for the taking. This morning again, we are going to come to the table of the Lord. All through the month, we are going to be looking at the victory that we see in the blood of Jesus. But this, this morning, we are going to come, we'll be coming before the Lord. We'll be coming before to partake of his table. We are coming to partake of communion. And we are saying, God, we receive life unto ourselves. Remember Leviticus 17, 11 that says the life of anything, the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of Jesus is in the blood of Jesus that was poured out for you. And that blood is still speaking on your behalf today. Is still speaking. Is speaking life to you. So we'll come to the table of the Lord this morning. And we're going to partake of communion. And you want to say to yourself, Lord, I focus on the life that there is in your blood. I take it that this life is not just, I'm not just taking a cup of juice. I'm not just taking a you know, dry, dry piece of bread. But Lord, I'm all 
opening up myself to the life that is in your blood. I'm opening up myself and I'm saying the power that resided in this, in this, um, in this blood, you know, years ago, still resides in it today. And so we are tapping into it. There might be areas of your life that, you know, you just want to say, Lord, I, I, want, I want more life. I want, I, want, um, I, I want more expression of life in this area of my life or the other. I want you to just bow down your head. I'm going to bless the communion emblems now. You will take the communion emblems and you're going to release your faith. You are going to release your faith and focus on the power. This is, this is like, as you are taking the cup, of, 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 uh, the, the, the cup this morning, it's like you are focusing on the life of Jesus. We said the, the life is in the blood. As you take that cup, you are focusing. Imagine the life of Jesus. It's a life of victory. It's a life where there, is no, there, there, there are no limitations. It's a life where he has, he has he's become one with the Father. He has access to the Father. And you just want to focus on that and say, God, I bring myself into all of this by the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the emblems this morning. We declare that these emblems are sanctified in the name of Jesus. They are blessed. And Lord, I pray that your people take them. Life is released upon them in the name of Jesus. If there are areas of their life that has been experiencing stagnation or even death. Lord, I ask that such areas begin to come alive. Such areas hear your voice this morning and return back to life. If there are areas where they've been functioning at 30%, 60%, Lord, we make a demand for 100% this morning. In the name of Jesus, I ask Almighty God also for healing in the bodies. As many as are here, as many as are listening to me online or will listen after now, we, I ask for God as communion is taken, as the bread is taken, let life come into their, our physical bodies in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that there is no limitation with you. Reach out, O oh God, and let life come in its fullness upon your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's not allowing you, to, you're allowing your body to function well. That is a level of death, and you just want to kick it out this morning as you take communion, as you take in the blood, as you take in the life of Jesus, as you appropriate the life of Jesus. We're asking that this life takes over in the name of Jesus. The same way the yeast will go into the dough and it takes over the, the whole dough, it just leavens the whole dough. We declare in the name of Jesus that the life of Jesus that you focus on this morning, the life of Jesus that you partake of this morning. It completely takes over the whole of you. It takes over, it takes over the whole of your physical, your physical frames. It takes over your body and we command every sickness gone. We command every weakness gone. We command every pain, every tiredness, every, every, lack, um, every kind of inability gone. In the name of Jesus, we embrace the life of God and we ask that your body comes into optimal performance. In the name of Jesus, we speak the life of God over your mind. Declare over your mind you are at your sharpest this month in the name of Jesus. As you take this communion, you are at your sharpest. Every time you take communion, you remind yourself that your mind is at work. Your mind is sharp. You are brilliant. You are intelligent. You are able to, keep, you are able to think up ideas, ideas that command resources in the name of Jesus. Speak over your mind. Declare. The Bible says that a righteous man, you are more excellent than all your neighbors. Tell yourself that you are excellent. In your mind, you are excellent. In the things that you do, in the words that you speak, excellence, it is useful. In the name of Jesus, we focus, we focus on the blood of Jesus. We focus on the strength that he makes available. We focus on the life. We focus on the miracles. In the name of Jesus, we declare we come into more and more miracles this week in the name of Jesus. We declare that all around us, we create an atmosphere of miracles in the name of Jesus. We create all around us an atmosphere of goodness, atmosphere of victories in the name of Jesus. Revelation of God comes. Revelation of God comes. The Bible says as we see him, as you behold him, 
you also become transformed. I tell you, the more of God that you see, the more of God you understand, the more of yourself that you understand. As you understand God, as revelation comes, I want you to pray that the revelation of Jesus will hit you this week and this month like it has never done. And the truth is, if the revelation of God increases in your life, the quality of your life will increase. The quality of your life will increase. You will command more resources, not just financial, not just physical, spiritual also, in the name of Jesus. Declare, say, eyes be opened in the name of Jesus. Not just your physical eyes, but the eyes of your spirit. Speak to yourself in the name of Jesus. As you take the wine, your eyes, maybe they were dim before in the spirit, but these eyes become sharp again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, they are able to focus on God. They are able to see the one that dwells between the cherubims. In the name of Jesus, the light of God will shine upon you. He will shine upon your path in the name of Jesus. I want you to speak to yourself. Speak resurrection in the name of Jesus. Speak resurrection to your mind in the name of Jesus. Call life, call life into being. Call life into being in every area of your life in the name of Jesus. Any weakness, any pain that you can remember right now, it might not have become excruciating and it doesn't need to become excruciating. I want you to speak to that pain in the name of Jesus. Speak to that pain and know that you are coming to give testimony. Speak to that pain right now in the name of Jesus. The word of God is in your mouth. The word of power is in your mouth. I want you to go ahead. The Lord Jesus gave us his name because he poured out his blood. He gave us his name because there is victory behind it by the blood that he poured out. Go ahead and make a demand in the name of Jesus. Make a demand upon your body. Make a demand upon your mind. Make a demand upon your life aspects and different areas of your life that you want to see changes. You want to see miracles. You want the Lord to come through for you. I want you to speak over the month of April. Speak over the month of April. Do you have expectation or is it just business as usual? Let's just be going before we know we'll come to October. That is not your portion in Jesus' name. Go ahead. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. There are beauties. There are colors that the Lord wants to add to you this month. There are colors, there are glitters that the Lord wants to see on your face. The Lord wants to see some sparkles on your face this month. I want you to go ahead and talk to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord this morning. Say, Lord, I'm in the house this morning and I'm trusting you for this. I'm in the house this morning and I'm asking that you will cause the light of your face to shine upon me. Let the eyes of your face, the light from your face, let it shine upon me. Let the light from your face shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, Lord. Let it shine. Lord, we want our sparkles to return. We want the glitz and glamour to return. In the name of Jesus, we want the jubilation in our voice to return in the name of Jesus. We want the bounce in yourselves to return in the name of Jesus. You are not just carrying on and dragging your feet after you, but you are bouncing. You are bouncing with the joy of the Lord because you know that the greater one is on the inside of you. You know that the one that has overcome is on your inside. The Bible says you are seated in heavenly places far above principalities and power. Revelation says, Woe or to the inhabitants of the earth. You are not part of those inhabitants of the earth because you live in the heavenly realm. I want you to pray and say, God, help me to operate from that realm this month. I don't want to operate from the earth. No, 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 I don't want to, oh God. The Bible says I'm lifted. I am seated in the heavenly places. Lord, can we operate from that place? Help me to cooperate with you this month. I want to operate from that realm. I want to see things from that realm. That realm where there is no lack. That realm where there is abundance. That realm where there is the all of God. Where we know we have audience with the Father. Where we know there is no network failure. Where we know that as we call the answers. Where we know that as we behold him. As we look at his face, we are seeing him and his light is shining upon us and we are becoming transformed. We are becoming a new person.
Mara gamba yanda nama si gerelia. Erebo yondo nomo soko tolida nama. Ye gerere bobo shondo lika nema. Father, we get ready for victory this month. We get ready for victory this month. We get ready, Lord. Mara gamba shi gere mo soko tolia. Menene nene monza katalinda na man sharalia. E prayanda nama ze gerere bo. Baragida na man sa gerere bo shodolia. Ayaka baragida na man sa katali gerere bo. Pede bo se gende mo sodolende na saralia. Thank you, Lord. Father, we receive life. We receive life in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and take the bread. Go ahead and take the cup. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare, Lord, that the summary of this month for us, individually and as a people, is that it's a month of victory because the blood has been shed and because the, part, the blood still speaks, it speaks better things than the blood of Abel concerning us. And so, Lord, we declare that we are going to rejoice all this month. We are going to be expectant all this month because we will share testimonies. We will have testimonies to share. Testimonies upon testimonies. That there will be not there will be no enough time to share them. Eventually, we will not we will need to write them and just read them because they are too much. Father, we thank you. We're expectant and we say, Lord, be exalted in our lives now and forevermore in the name of Jesus. Amen.